If you've been here before, you probably recognize Mr. Shane Haggard, analytical chemist. Oh, yeah. 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 So Shane and I were talking about what to do tonight, right? So if you've been here before, you might have seen the chemistry of rockets or the chemistry of water. And we're talking about different live demonstrations to do and all this good stuff. And some of it's you know combustibles and some are pressure and this and that. And it's just like, you know what? Why pick one, right? You know, why Why only focus on one? So, Shane is going to demonstrate some really, really awesome principles of science tonight, kind of covering all sorts of stuff, and there's some audience participation built in. So, I hope you're ready, especially in the front row here. <laughs> we are safe, we have to have safety uh, equipment. So, uh, without any further ado, I will turn it over to Shane, everybody. Give him a hand. So I talk loud anyway. So, how's everybody's evening? Yeah. All right, excellent, excellent. All right, so, um, is it on there? Okay, it's getting there. All right, so, okay. Um, so, the kind of the plan tonight was just to kind of show you just some cool science in general. Um, my field is chemistry, but I figured to do a little bit more besides just chemistry. Um, I got a couple of physics, physics kind of stuff, a couple of engineering kind of things, and there's some audience participation as well. So uh, um, I might call in some volunteers. Don't worry, the doctors assured me my last volunteer will make a full recovery, and supposedly his hair will grow back. <laughs> so don't worry, all right? So it should be fine. Um, so let's just start off with something kind of simple and cool. Uh, last month I talked about water and the uniqueness of water and its chemistry. And I kind of want to go back and, and show you some of that. Some of that. To start off with that, uh, some of the demos are going to be like water and solids and gases and stuff. So I do want to start off with like the water again and some of the cute properties of water. Um, plus I can get the water demo out of the way and that way I don't have to worry about electrocuting myself. Which might be fun for you guys, but uh, it might be so good for me. Um, so this is one of the ones I need a volunteer. All right, volunteer. Excellent. Right. What is your name? Say again. Lachlan. Lachlan. All right. Were you here last week? Last month? No. Okay. So good. All right. All right. So we got. So as a good scientist, you always have to wear safety goggles. So there's a pair of safety goggles. All right. So what we're going to do first is look at a unique property of water which is called its heat capacity. And that just basically means water can hold a lot of heat before it uh, boils. Um, and we're going to do this by looking at some balloons. So let me get my handy dandy thing here. There we go. I'm going to light a couple of candles. Who's excited for Star Wars next Friday? Alright, so these are just regular balloons right now. And what do you think is going to happen when you stick these, these balloons in the fire? Do you know you're buying them? Nothing's going to explode on them yet. Alright, what's going to happen when you stick these in the flame? Alright, what's going to happen when you stick these in the, in the, in the, in the, stick these in the, in the flame? Oh, probably going to pop. Let's write it out. She can get there. Oh, mine was kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> The joys of demos, sometimes they go right, sometimes they go bad. They start with me. Alright. Oh, your balloon didn't get a hole. Yeah. Oh well. So basically if you put a balloon in a, in, in a fire, it's going to melt and pop and all that good stuff. Well, I've got a couple of different balloons to play with. And I, I did this on purpose because it is Christmas. Uh, mine's got red water and it's got green water. Isn't that festive? <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do this time is look at something a little different. I want you to take your balloon, take it up. I'm going to put it in the fire of the candle, right where the water is. All right. Let's do that. 
and see what happens. Just stick it in there. Now, water has a high heat capacity. That means it can absorb a lot of, a lot of heat. So basically what we're doing is we have just a big heat sink now that that flame is going into. And as a result now, that balloon's not going to pop. That rubber doesn't get hot enough to actually melt. We need to put it in the flame. Look where mine is. All right, now let's pick it up and look at the bottom. All right, so that's a lot of heat capacity, right? We talk about water in off the radiators and water using to like cool computers and stuff, and that's because water can take a lot, a lot of heat, a lot of energy. So yeah, you can just kind of like stick this in here. And, um, I, I've done this demo before where I get like one of those really big human-sized balloons, and I get a propane torch, not just a candle. And yeah, it just there, there goes mine. <laughs> I went a little sideways. All right, let's see if yours is still okay. Mine's kind of expanding. Probably so. You're actually boiling the water. You might notice it. Lift it up. Can you see the water's boiling? Oh, yeah. So he actually was boiling the water inside the balloon. That's how hot that actually got inside there. I got mine so hot it actually kind of exploded. But you know, hey, that's all right. At least it didn't explode and get all over you. That's fine. Okay, well, since it's fine, um, then we'll just get you wet more then. That's just a bit more fun. Where are we? Oh, there we go. All right, so that was, you know, that's water's unique capacity to absorb heat. Now, water also has a unique capacity in the terms of it has a high surface tension. All right. Now, how many of you have ever like floated something on the surface of water? Are those cool little water bugs? Have you seen those that go across the water? And if you look at their feet, it looks like the water's indented. It's like, why don't they sink? All right, that's because water has a, has a high surface tension because of its chemical nature. And we're going to kind of look at that again. Now, I've got a couple of jars here. Again, Christmassy. All right, I try to do, I try to do the theme here to make it work. I'm just going to add a little bit more water here. See, this is why I'm doing this demo first, so I, so I can make my mess. And you guys have probably seen this before. All right. All right, I filled them up. I've got a couple of cards that are laminated, right? So get yours. Get your red one. Put your hand on top. Lift it up. Flip it over. And take your hand away. All right, so this is a pretty cool little demo. Now, this isn't quite the surface tension idea, but the fact that there's air pressure pushing on this card to hold it here. Now, our surface tension demo is going to be the fun one. We'll work on, okay, you're, you're pretty good out there. Now, don't you take your card. And slide it off to the side. Slide it off, slide it off, slide it off. You messed up. <laughs> well, mine didn't fall. No, it's just water. In fact, I, you know, my water's just fine. Water has a unique surface tension. All right? Now, my secret is... I have mesh in mine. <laughs> All right. His did not. His was just one big open hole. The mesh here helped that surface tension of water be amplified. So as a result, the air couldn't get in to, to have the pressure on top to push the water out. All right. Uh, one of the fun things you can try to do is if you try to tilt it and do it like this to catch it, it doesn't quite work. You've already got air pressure here pushing things out. But that's a unique thing about water, is the fact that it has a very cool surface tension, and it can absorb a lot of heat. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and you didn't get hurt. Not yet. <laughs> Are you saying you want to? No. Okay, all right, fine, 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 fine. All right, so that's the first couple of demos. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't get soaking wet. I didn't get soaking wet, so that's a good thing. Uh, what's what's next on my agenda? Oh. All right, so I gotta move this out of the way. Oh, is it this right here? We'll play with that more here in a minute. All right. So that was an interesting. That's kind of interesting things about water. So let's kind of move on to something a little different now. Let's talk about gases. And speaking of gases, I need to turn that on. And this is not acetone, by the way. This is just a jug. 
right. All right. So, what I have here is just a two liter bottle with some water in it. And I would like somebody else to come help you. You were at the big spot. Who would like to help you? Oh, come on up here. Yeah, and I. And I and All right, so now I have to be good because. Uh, what's your name again? Cody here is one of my co-workers' grandchildren, so I literally said he it has to be good and yeah. not yeah. cause problems. All right, Cody. Glasses. Goggles, please. Thank you. All right, when you're talking about gases, there's four properties we talk about. Pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas you have. So what I have here is a two-liter bottle, so I have a fixed volume, and there's water in here that I'm shaking up to get water vapor. So there's a fixed amount of water vapor. The two properties I'm going to look at are pressure and temperature. The law says as pressure goes up, temperature goes up. So what we're going to do, Cody, is I'm going to hold this and you have a foot pump. And what I want you to do is I'm going to hold this on here and I want you to squeeze this pump about 10 times. One, two, Three, four, five, six, keep going, seven, all right, eight's good, we'll stop at eight. All right, so the rule says that as pressure goes up, temperature goes up. So what I've done here is I've increased the pressure in here, that means the temperature went up, I evaporated more water, I also raised the temperature of the water vapor inside. What do you think happens when pressure goes down? Temperature goes down, and as a result, you get a cloud. All that water vapor that was in here instantly converted back into liquid vapor suspended in the air, and this is how you get fog. Now, we can get rid of our cloud. How do you think you get rid of the cloud? Let's put the pressure back on. All right. Go for it. So in the mornings when you find running the foggy areas, what you're doing is you're going in between different areas of high pressure and low pressure, and as a result, you're changing the, uh, the temperature of the air molecules. Oh, it went away. Let's do one more. But I can make it come back. All right? And since it was already pretty warm, I can't get it's quite a good cloud the second time. But this is how we actually get weather. It's because you're just changing the pressure of gases which means you're changing the temperature of gases. Pretty cool. What do you think? Cloud in the bottle. Thank you, buddy. Yay, Toby. All right, I'm going to try to just keep watching that for a minute. More fun stuff will happen with this. Um, those of you in the front, let me know when you see steam coming out. <laughs> All right, so. All right. I kind of like the cloud of all that's kind of cool. All right, since we're talking about gases, let's talk about air and gases and the way air moves. California and we have we have a fire season. Alright? Especially when it gets very dry and everything. We have potential of lots of fires. And one of the things that's very dangerous about fires is when it gets really hot, hot air rises, and as a result there's a low pressure area towards the ground and it sucks more air in. And it kind of keeps feeding this fire kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is actually show you a phenomenon that happens when you have that going on. Alright. So I'm going to show you this to begin with with just a little crucible here. Oops, that's not the one I want. Oh, there it is. All I've done here is I've got a, a sponge and I just got a little bit of lighter fluid on it. Fire. <laughs> Alright, so as you know, heat is rising, it's sucking air in. Now, when I spin this, nothing really happens. It just kind of keeps burning. The thing you have to worry about when you have a forest fire 
is the fact that there are trees around us. These are my trees. Trees change the direction in how air flows. And what's going to happen is we get a phenomenon that happens here in fires that is very dangerous. All right, so let's take this. Put this on here. Put this here. Get this. All right, so again, hot air is rising, air is coming in, but now it's got something around it. Let's say those are trees, and let's say the wind gets going. you actually can get what we call a fire tornado. Notice it, how it's spinning, and as it spins, it's lifting because that hot air is rising, it's being sucked in. I think I probably need something a little more uh, flammable down there. Let's put that out. Let's see if we can get a big fire. <laughs> Hans, this is where you should probably go get the fire extinguisher. Put the whole bag in there. Oh no, I'm not putting the whole bag in there. All right, so here we go. Now you might think, okay, that's kind of a cool little thing to happen. But let's think about what happens in our fire season. All right. If we have a lots of fires going on and there's lots of trees, air being sucked in is moving around those trees, and you get lots and lots of these fire tornadoes. As you notice, it grows in height, and as a result, it can spread the fires more. So this is actually a pretty dangerous thing. And when you have a fire season, one of the, reasons, one of the things you try to do is cut down some of the trees to get rid of that danger of making those fire tornadoes. Let's see if I can, should I make a bigger one? Yeah. One more. <laughs> this is always kind of fun. There we go. I have seen this be done before on a larger scale, and they can get up to like 15 to 20 feet tall, all right? But I didn't want to do 15 or 20 feet tall. I don't think Hans would appreciate me burning the ceiling. Pretty cool, I think. All right. So, go well, out. There we go. So one of the things you have to worry about is the fact that that's the way that is moved. organic molecule and what I want to kind of show you is uh, again the idea of air yeah, me you're needing air for fire um, I grew up in the south I'm from Alabama originally and we used to farm grain and you take grain and you put it in a grain silo and one of the dangers with a grain silo is fire 
and you might think, well, how can you get fire? It's because when you're putting grains in, you get a lot of dust. So this is this powder, and what I want you to do, I want you to light that, and just stick it in the powder. Hopefully, just to squeeze it. All right, so actually, I don't want to actually... Uh, okay, please don't burn my hand! Let's do it this way. 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 There we go. Right, so light that up and try to light that. Really doesn't do a lot, right? It can you get just a little bit of something. But what really happens is when you can get it aerosol. So I'm going to try to aerosol. And this is where you're going to help me. Kim? Yeah. All right, Kim. This is where you're going to, you're going to help me. Now this demo is a little fuzzy because it kind of has to have really dry air to work. All right, so Kim, what I want you to do is I want you to hold the flamethrower, all right? And I'm going to load your flamethrower for floater. Floater, I'm going to load your thingy with powder. And hopefully I can get all the powder in here. All right, see the powder right there? See what's right there? And what I want you to do, and I don't think this part, aim that way. <laughs> Bite it. Just pull, pull that and squeeze. There we go. Yeah, pull that back. Pull that part back and let me pull the trigger. All right, let's see. Four fingers straight. Oh, maybe it's for sure. Push it push forward. Forward. <laughs> there we go. All right. One, two. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't know if you did one. So the whole idea is when you have something that you can get in the aerosol form in air, it is more likely to burn. This little powder right here doesn't really burn a lot. All right? It doesn't, really, it doesn't burn too great. But, let's do it again. Let's see if we can make it bigger this time. Right, first, I gotta load this. All right. All right, hold that too. All right. My can is steaming. Oh, great! That's all I wanted to know is when my can is steaming. Yeah, let's get some more powder in here. This is the fun part of science. What do you do, Kim? Um, okay, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> oh, okay. Then it's what. All right, I need this part. All right, so we're going to put some more in here. Hopefully, we'll get a good, a good, a good fire this time. Fire's fun, right? <laughs> Like I said, my last assistant is sure maybe you will be fine. I'm not sure it got me to get in there. So this time I'll let you put